Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how um, simple harmonic motion is, um, or maybe circular motion is a special case of simple harmonic motion. It's probably better to say it that way. But simple harmonic mo circular motion, keep getting tongue tied. Circular motion is simple harmonic motion. SHM being simple harmonic motion in two dimensions. So we are having simple harmonic motion in the X and the Y. So now Flipping Physics has a very good video on this um, where he has some simulations where he tracks it out. So I recommend watching his video on this because I don't know how to embed videos like that and I would honestly just do the same thing he does pretty much. Um, so you should watch his little simulation. I can include some GIFs maybe but that's as far as I'm going. Okay. So but one thing we can consider if you guys are, if I want to plot my x as a function of t, my y as a function of t, right? So for circular motion, and let's say, you know, let's say you've got some initial variable for your x, r. And we'll start this guy as a cosine function. So we'll start x at 1, and we're going to do the same thing for y, but we're going to start y at 0. So these are the position equations I've used in simple arm motion before. Right? I mean, I've just done 1 is x, 1 is y. No big deal. So if I look at where these should be, so if I try and track the position of whatever this is as a function of time, well this should be at start here, right? Assuming r naught's positive, right? r naught. So then sometime later, whenever, um, when t works out so that this, this x term is going to go to zero at some point, in the same time, the sine term is going to be maximum. So at some point it's going to go to here, then it's going to go to the other side, it's going to come down here. So you are eventually going to track yourself a circle. And it's going to be traveling this way. So when you're doing simple motion stuff, it's circular motion stuff is the same. So all of our circular motion equations are going to apply. And that's a very important uh, thing to realize. So using that idea, um, f so I could look at a, a sp spring example and a mass spring. Draw my walls, draw my spring, draw my box. Yeah. All right. So. I know that if I pull this guy and displace him a distance x, I know that the force is going to be this way in a value of minus kx, or I could do magnitude of kx if I want. Right? So the force is going to oppose that direction. Um, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. But you could imagine I had a system where I had a spring going the other way, and I could actually get it going in circular motion if I had a spring this way too. So it could, you know, like that if I did it right. Um, or maybe, maybe take four springs. Anyways, so it would be circular motion. So, but the trick here is that my force we know is equal to, my, to k. Let's do absolute values. Let's, let's say absolute value of kx, magnitude of force, right? Well, what is the that equal to in simple harmonic motion stuff? So I could either say 
centripetal force equals mv squared over r is probably the more common one you guys have seen. But another one you guys saw, which I think is going to be more important now, is going to be m omega squared r. So, and I kind of like this one for, for simple harmonic motion, because that omega in those cosine omega t terms, right, this cosine omega t and sine omega t, that's the same omega. So we're going to be able to deal with that a little bit. So, what I need to do then, if I want to set these, figure these out, I can say that x, I can make this guy an x also. So let's rewrite this as maybe m omega squared x, because we're only dealing with one dimension as force. There we go. That's important too. So, but I can say kx, since we're doing magnitudes, I'm not going to the signs, it's going to be m omega squared x, right? And instantly, my x's are going to cancel. Those are gone it's right away. So I want to know what this omega is, is what I'm doing. Omega is going to be square root of k over m. So in all of these terms, these, the sine, this cosine, omega square root k over m for a mass spring. And I can do something very similar with a little bit more complicated math um, for pendulums. And I can say omega is square root g over l. And so when we look at those period formulas that we have, we say period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k, right? And then we also say period is 2 pi square root of L over G. What if I, ooh, what if I put omega in for these equations? Then they're gonna look the same. So T equals two pi divided by omega, right? Cause K over M, this is M over K, so I just flip it. And what if I, solve this for, what if I rep replace this with frequency, one over frequency? So let's do that. So that tells me that omega is equal to two pi times the frequency, which probably an equation we learned before, um, it's certainly true, but this is just saying that angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times regular frequency, which makes a lot of sense. So this is saying how many radians, um, so this is saying, okay, this is cycles per second, right, this frequency, and this is radians per second, so if I'm at one cycle is two pi radians, so it makes sense that to convert, I would just multiply by two pi. All right, um, I'm gonna call it quits in this video. I just mostly wanna talk, say that all of your circular motion stuff is valid. I also wanted to tell you what that omega is in terms of like something comprehensible. All right, see you in the next one, guys. Stay safe out there.